up to second part of our lecture, which will be about libraries, special feature in Python, which makes coding much, much easier. And that's one of the reasons why I choose uh, code in Python and uh, provide all these lectures in Python because uh, Python has a lot of libraries and uh, quite big community. Uh, so it's uh, quite easy to, uh, to code in it. So what is libraries? Libraries are just, uh, first we are beginning with modules, which are, can be called the simpler version of libraries. So modules is any Python file, any. And uh, because uh, you can edit and this Python like, uh, this Python file is not only in Jupyter Notebook, but actually in any text editor. It's uh, very easy to uh, to create your own modules, and uh, that's why we actually we will create four modules, which are uh, which are about probably four parts of whole course. Uh, first module will be about math. That's why it will be called math lib.py and uh, all these files will be in will be placed on github and the second one will be opt lib and this uh, library uh, this module uh, will be about optimization methods and uh, uh, the third one and the fourth one are right now um, unidentified because uh, they are, will be they will appear quite frequently in the second uh, part of our workers so after we've created our file in python uh, we can now use this file to make our coding much easier in the next file so imagine you have file.py and file2.py and like Oh, let's call it main and this call module, module.py. Uh, in that, uh, for that instance, we can write down some functions or some procedures uh, in module.py and then we can use them in uh, main.py using special syntax import and then module. So we don't need to write .py, we just uh, write name of our file. And uh, these files must be in uh, one folder uh, because uh, if it's not, then there can be an error and then importing uh, files from different uh, directories or folders um, can be a little bit harder, but not quite hard. Uh, but uh, still it's better to keep them in one folder for simplicity. And after you've wrote this line, import module, you can actually uh, use every function and every class uh, which you wrote in module.py uh, in main.py. But you'll need, for example, in module.py we have some function x. We've defined some function. And there are lines of code and so on. And if we want to use our uh, this function in our main Python file, then we will need to write this syntax. We will need to start from module to say that this function is from module which we imported, imported and uh, then we will write just name of function and then arguments that this function has. Pretty simple. Uh, and if we have several modules, then we'll just write uh, the second module and third module and so on. And uh, uh, also there is one small feature which makes importing modules even easier. 
sometimes modules, uh, because we have a lot of, for example, Python files, they can have quite long names. And in that case, we can uh, denote our module using special syntax word S and denote it any name you want. And for example, if we have one or two modules, we can just uh, uh, denote them as one letter. And, uh, or you can denote it by two letters, three letters, and so on. Uh, use some special abbreviations. And for example, if we are talking about uh, library NumPy and library uh, NumPy, people usually denote it as NP, and uh, uh, this denotion is, uh, uh, is so omnipresent that every, everyone uh, uses it in code and it's actually like a second name of this uh, library. And uh, after I mentioned what module is, uh, now we can um, mention what library is. So library or package, there are actually two names, library, you can call it package, it's just several modules. These definitions are not very strict, so you can call even a module, uh, a library or package if you want to. Uh, to. But uh, usually uh, if we have some several modules which has uh, one, uh, which do one thing or uh, used in one field of science, uh, for example, like plotting some graphs or uh, doing some scientific calculation, then uh, this, uh, these modules can be Edit into library, and so uh, they it will be just a list of a list of uh, modules, module one, and so on. And final feature which uh, distinguish our library from module is file init. Where you write how to uh, how to enter into into all these modules, so it's uh, just uh, and then you can just import this file instead of others. And uh, we won't do libraries, so that's why I'm not going too deeply into uh, structures of into this structure on how to do uh, how to do librarying. So we'll because we just don't need. Uh, such uh, huge packages, we'll just uh, stick to one module and uh, because we will have it, we will have four modules, uh, we don't need to create special library or package uh, which we'll like call machine learning course. So that's why you can just create Python file and then use it uh, using special, this special syntax. And now uh, I've done one module, uh, MathLib module, which will work with throughout this whole course. So this is how to import them. And uh, here we import our MathLib module. And actually uh, our uh, this MathLib.py uh, file is actually right now in the same folder as our Jupyter notebook and that's why it all works smoothly and uh, we can see if we, are if we just open it in, uh, in Jupyter notebook or just uh, any text editor or uh, mathlib.py file, we can see that there are already five functions uh, which, are, which I pre-wrote pre for you. And they are sum x, uh, which just uh, uh, a function which just finds sum of all elements in our list, and uh, max, uh, which finds maximum value, index of maximum value, minimum value, and uh, index of minimum value. Uh, it's 
uh, they are very simple five functions and uh, now it's up to you, it uh, will be part of your home task to uh, constantly add some new functions which we will uh, use later. And here we see that we will just uh, wrote mass.lib mass lib sum and uh, here is our uh, here's our list and you can see that it all works it sums it finds maxes uh, maximum values and minimum values and now we are going to uh, libraries which we'll work with first library which will be used quite commonly is time library this library uh, we will just use because of one function uh, this function just tells exact time uh, when this function is called and this time is uh, is returned in seconds and uh, this time begins from 1970 January 1st as I remember and uh, why we'll use this library uh, just because we can we can test uh, how fast our algorithms uh, and compare each other uh, by their speed using this library. So here's our uh, toy example where we just uh, do some time-consuming operation. You can read in lately in notebook what this operation is. And uh, we just call our time uh, we just call it first time, our function, and uh, denote uh, current time as t1. And then we call, after doing this uh, whole procedure, we are calling it second time and uh, store our uh, second time in t2 variable. And then we can just subtract, subtract t2 minus t1 and get uh, a close approximation to time of work of our function. And then you can see uh, how long our function works and uh, here's number of steps which it done and then we are going to mass library uh, this is this library will be used much more commonly because uh, it will be used for uh, f like our python has only uh, has only five operators mathematical operators like subtraction, multiplication, uh, and so on. And uh, that's why we just cannot calculate sine, for example, or exponent just from scratch. You can actually do it uh, using some uh, special calculating algorithms, and which are quite complex, and it's not a part of our lesson at all. It's uh, more into calculational, uh, calculational coding. And uh, that's why we'll just use our library mass to make uh, everything easier. Like we can just import mass, and uh, because I choose, uh, I recommend you to install Anaconda. Anaconda uh, in Anaconda there are uh, a lot of packages which are pre-installed, and uh, so it's very easy to to use them you just uh, type import and then name of library you want and time is already in python mass is already in python and uh, the third one library is already pre-installed in anaconda so right now you don't need to install everything and if, if you installed also tensorflow then you don't need actually to uh, do, do installation of packages at all and here is our mass function. It calculates some exponents. It's, uh, it has different uh, interesting functions and it also stores some important constants like pi and earliest number. We have exponent sign. Uh, it has also some, um, some functions which are uh, which work with a sign of number, for example, and uh, it can round our number, like uh, to the integer, and so on. And uh, here uh, we compare our mass uh, mass library, which is uh, 
intended to be faster because it's written not actually in Python, it's uh, partially co compiled in C, which is uh, probably the fastest language. Uh, and we compare it with our mathlib function uh, because both, both this library and our module has one function with the same purpose, uh, which is sum, which sums all elements in our, uh, in our list. And we can see that actually, yeah, our math library, uh, mathlib is is slower, and uh, but we still are going to use our mathlib uh, function because it has because uh, we just want to understand how it all works in the depths, and that's why we'll still use uh, mathlib because when we are summing something, we are not. Uh, we're not spending too much time and it's not the uh, most time consuming operation in, in our next algorithms. And uh, this is random function, which I already mentioned in, in the first part of the lecture. It's uh, commonly used in uh, simulated annealing because you need to generate randomly your your neighbors and we will use three function first one is just uh, random dot random uh, uh, it doesn't have any input and its output is a random number from one to zero and uh, uh, the second function is random dot randint which uh, so this function random Randint. I'm writing because it has two inputs, A and B, and it returns number which is greater uh, or equal to A and greater uh, or smaller to or equal to B. And uh, it, it was used, for example, in traveling salesman problem. Uh, which was solved by simulating annealing because uh, in that case we wanted to first we wanted to see our path then we wanted to uh, choose choose index which we are starting our swap uh, and uh, we also wanted numbers of elements which we are going to swap and it all was generated by this function and it's working. And uh, the last one is, is function random.shuffle. Uh, so this function, uh, for example, we have some list of numeric num uh, of numbers and then it shuffles it. So it changes, it, it changes all order of elements in it and uh, this will be used in simulated, uh, this is used in simulated annealing uh, and in some other, in some other algorithms, algorithms which we are going to use. So you can see that this is our random number from 0 to 1, this is our random number from 0 to 5 inclusively and uh, here we have our list uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and as you can see, after shuffling, uh, uh, a range, uh, range of our elements uh, has changed. And final library for this day is matplotlib, which uh, will be used mostly for, which will be used uh, actually only for uh, plotting some data, which we are going to uh, optimize on, or just uh, trying to visualize uh, visualize uh, processes which are going in uh, uh, during our optimization. So um, Matplotlib is actually a quite big library and that's why we will use only a fraction of it uh, which is called matplotlib.pyplot and uh, this fraction can uh, draw 2D plots and so, for example, we want to uh, understand how, in traveling salesman problem, we want to understand how, uh, for example, we are solving it with simulated annealing, and we want to know how 
distance changes with time or with uh, index of, uh, of iterations. And if we want to get something, that graph that I drew you, uh, you can use matplotlib and uh, you'll soon see how to, how to draw uh, plots from this data. So here we have two pretty easy functions. So first one, if we want to uh, just plot one array, for example, uh, in case of trailing salesman problem, we want just to plot distance because we don't care about uh, our axis because uh, we already know that each point is a new iteration and we knew that the distance between point uh, on x axis is uh, always equal to 1. That's why we just uh, print our one array and uh, then uh, to sh show our graph, we just type plot.show. And uh, we are using the notion plot for this long name. You can see that it's quite long, that's why we just denote it like plot. plot. And uh, here, if we have um, x and y uh, different value, values, it's a more common, common type. If we have just some experimental data in physics or some data which we'll get in uh, during process of optimization or just graphs of uh, functions uh, in that case where uh, this plot dot plot has two inputs one x list and second is y list and again we're using plot show it's uh, this function doesn't change and now let's See how we are printing parabola, for example. You can see that here we have some arrays, x and y. And then we just calculate in our cycle, we calculate uh, current values of x and y. And then we append them to our global array. And then we plot our array. And you can see that, uh, you can see that this is a graph because I took not too many points. 21, uh, you can see that actually matplotlib connects two points with a, a line and you can see this line is not a, really a parabola, it's just an approximation. And uh, if you want to get more deep into matplotlib, um, the first one you can do is to change colors and types of this graph because um, if you print your graphs you will always get this uh, blue line and if you want to change color of it for example you can use special syntaxes so matplotlib has these colors red green blue uh, like uh, magenta yellow black and cyan and uh, these are main colors and you can actually do uh, any color you want, but uh, these colors are the easiest one to draw and to, to draw using codes. And uh, also we have some uh, type of lines, for example, you can uh, do a dotted line. You can do a, s a simple line, you can do a dotted line. You uh, this is dashed line, excuse me and dotted line or even dot dashed line there are different types different opportunities and uh, finally we can uh, we can go with some markers marker if if we have our plot then marker is actually a point uh, a point with coordinates x so we took uh, uh, we took respectively x and y coordinate and then we can uh, we can not draw marker here or we can draw some marker and marker is uh, some denotion for that exact point so we can see uh, if if this is a point or just a line. And uh, markers are usually used not 
uh, not in uh, machine learning because in machine learning we usually have lots of lots of numbers and uh, it's better to use just simple line because uh, if you if you do markers on each point then whole this graph uh, will look will look very messy because of, because uh, markers will intersect with each other and we can have uh, just round marker triangle marker plus marker and and so on or no marker and here we plot our here we plot just different graphs you can see red with red markers and uh, you can uh, also important feature of matplotlib that you can plot several um, several lines on the same graph and here is your graph you plotted we plotted parabola and uh, just a straight line and you can see that they are shown on the one graph and uh, if you want to do that you just uh, type plot plot and only after that plot dot show so uh, this means that uh, our fun function plot plot dot show it uh, creates actually a graph and it shows to you and uh, if you are not typing it uh, then you you will not receive a graph you will just uh, receive out and matplotlib lines so it will just it's some object and uh, that won't be a graph without typing this function show And uh, Matplotlib has a lot of opportunities. You can print not only 2D graphs, by, but uh, 3D scatter plots, uh, line plots. As uh, I actually used uh, Matplotlib in, uh, for example, in second lecture, with, where we talked about functions, and uh, there were different 3D graphs, and uh, it was also done in Matplotlib. But uh, we are not. Uh, we don't that just needs all this uh, complicated uh, stuff. So we will just stick to uh, basic simple line 2D plot and it will be enough to see all processes uh, which are going down in simulated annealing and other optimization algorithms. And here is your practice task. Uh, this lecture is not very long because uh, libraries is so easy and are so easy and it's very easy to implement them uh, so uh, first one is a mass uh, task because uh, we haven't had uh, uh, we haven't had a mass lesson today because uh, it was stood by coding and uh, optimization lessons uh, so here's uh, your you you need to understand what derivative is and that's why i uh, ch choose for you 10, uh, 10 functions, quite complicated functions, uh, not so easy as for um, the previous lesson. And you will need to uh, find derivatives and then these functions will be also plotted. So first one is, you'll need to add uh, two more functions into our, our mass leap. Uh, module uh, which will create just array uh, it will create an array which starts from uh, from number start and then it goes with and ends at number stop and uh, there will be uh, there will be two functions and uh, one will be with three inputs start stop and step which means that the next uh, the next element will be start plus step and so on it will be a uh, arithmetical progression and uh, a difference between each element is step is equal to step and uh, the second will be uh, will be pretty close you'll have a function which creates a list of values which start at start and stop at stop and uh, but uh, the third argument will be a number of elements which you'll have in uh, this in this list 
And so why, uh, why do you need to write down these functions? Because actually you'll use them uh, in the same home task. Because if we are, for example, uh, using this function, then we can just uh, uh, create a X list. So we can, how can we use it? For example, I created this function, which we'll call lean space. Is used and it returns our X list, for example, if we want to draw our plot. And then we will type some X mean, X max, and for example, we want 100 points. And uh, X min and X max will be, uh, will be starting and uh, ending points of our graph. And then you'll just create a loop for uh, Y in range 100. You have your Y graph and uh, here you, each time you append So you have, uh, you created your X, uh, X list, then you've uh, created a loop, and in that loop you just uh, take elements, uh, elements of your list you created, and uh, then apply some function which you are going to plot, and then just append this uh, Y value to your Y list. And then you just uh, type plot.plot, .plot x and y, and plot.show. And that's it, and for every function you want to, uh, you want to plot, if, it's, uh, if it has one argument and uh, one output, uh, it will do, and uh, you'll just uh, need to, uh, you'll just need to assign your function which you're just going to plot by yourself. And these plots are not only, um, not only for practice, but also for some discussion. So after, uh, after you've differentiated your 10 functions, you'll need to, uh, you'll need to plot, uh, plot uh, graphs of functions 4, 5, 7, 9, and 10. I choose them because they don't have singularities and they're uh, quite smooth, and uh, after that you you uh, explore your derivative, and uh, you'll find some interesting property, and uh, that classification, that uh, the results which you'll get uh, from that task, um, they are quite important. And in the uh, in the next lecture, we will talk more about them, and so we will finally uh, use derivative which we've just talked and uh, haven't used uh, for any practical reasons. Uh, we'll use them for coding and this will be in upcoming next lecture. So that's it and goodbye.